know that I'm going to make it to this Twitch stream. Hopefully we'll have some followers along soon, but just getting started now with some Teamer Clover. So before I start playing, I'll talk a little bit about some of what I've been doing with the deck. Um, it looks pretty similar. There's a lot of cards you can't really change, so not too much is new, but I noticed a couple of things. One that I was testing one Growth Spiral for a while, and it felt really good when I drew it, like a surprising amount of the time. So I'm up to two Growth Spiral, down to three Lovestruck Beast. Lovestruck Beast is probably the, the card that, out of the three kind of core adventure interactive cards here, it's the one that most often kind of lets me down a little bit, in that it's not great against a... It's not really good against the food decks, which is kind of a key thing, and is kind of mediocre against green-black, too. It's great against aggro, great against gruel, um, and can put a clock on people sometimes, but it's just a little little worse than the other options, I think, on average. Uh, so I'm down to three of those right now, still at 27 lands. Recently decided to uh, try and buff up my colored source a little bit. Felt like it was okay to cut one basic, basically cut a mountain for a steam vents, and then cut a temple of epiphany for a temple of mystery, and a forest for an island, because I... Kind of was having a few too many games where it was hard to find blue mana, particularly double blue for Brazen Borrower. So, lands are a bit different. Um, spell distribution, I'm up to a four Escape to the Wilds. Um, something that's actually... Actually, come to think of it, four Escape to the Wilds has felt a bit clumsy. I think I'm actually going to try going down to three and back up to four Lovestruck Beast here. But I've noticed that I really have wanted Escape to the Wilds to wish to for on occasion. And, uh, you don't really want to hit Escape Revealing Escape. That doesn't feel good. So... The card I'm deciding to cut here is one that I've been a little bit iffy on for a while. It's Negate. Uh, sometimes it's nice to be able to fetch this card to be prepared to interact with an opponent, but I found that more of the time, uh, now that we have some Aethergust in the sideboard, Aethergust counters kind of a lot of the things that Negate was supposed to be countering anyway, and uh, it's just the card that I kind of find myself looking for least often. So a couple of other changes I'm going to make here. I'm going to dump the Negate, dump the uh, Return to Nature here, um, just because I found that Aethergust is actually, against uh, Fires and Cats, Aethergust is actually just a fine card I want anyway. Um, and it's much more flexible, of course, than Return to Nature in many situations. So I'm going to try going up to three Aethergust, just so I can kind of board these in. This card is really strong right now, including against Blue-Green Ramp, which is a tough matchup for the deck. So you've dropped one Return to Nature here, and then finally, Canless Transformation. This, this has been Lava Coil sometimes, this has been Frogify sometimes. I've tried some different cards in this spot, but... I have noticed a few spots lately where I've been really reluctant to cast this, just because turning a, I don't know, a 7-7 seven, seven Corvold into a 6-6 six, six is not that great, uh, for example. Um, and even though the card is nice, I, I've sometimes just felt like Frogify was exactly what I needed against Aggro. So this is a card I'm considering cutting, but I think for now I'll keep it in. For now I'm okay keeping it. It still sort of does what's supposed to do against cards like Kenrith, Flavorfully, or Hydroid Crisis, that sort of thing. So I think I'm going to keep that the same, and let's just uh, jump in the queue. See what we've decayed to here. All right, up against Centaur. On the play, I like that. This deck has a really kind of a funny play draw distribution um, in that you have almost no difference between play wins and draw wins. Ooh, opponent is also using super sick, uh, super sick sleeves, just like we are with our cryptic command here. I think I actually like the luck of the lightning bolt sleeves a bit more, but I'm definitely fond of uh, having a sleeve that represents getting sick card advantage because that is what this deck is all about. So starting out with the Scryland there, we're really just looking to hit Lucky Clover. Pretty much nothing else is nearly as good as Lucky Clover. Opponent's on Mono Red. Okay, so this Love Struck Beast is going to be really good. In fact, we'll probably do a good job of holding them off by itself. Uh, drawing more Pain Lands isn't that fun, but right now I'm feeling pretty okay about where we're at. I'd love to find some Bone Crusher Giants or maybe the uh, other three copies of Love Struck Beast. I feel really smart that we put the fourth Love Struck Beast in the deck now. We're just going to get Bone Crushered. Sure. Your whole turn killing this one mana one one. Love to see that. Edgewall Innkeeper is interesting. I'm almost tempted to cast it this turn. Like I could go Breeding Pool, then Beanstalk Giant into a land, and then Innkeeper, and then next turn just Lovestruck Beast. Draw a card. Hmm. I actually think I'm going to do that. Um, 
I do take a hit if they can, uh, I mean, if they can shock the innkeeper, that's a little sad. But the thing is, I'm never going to be drawing a card off this innkeeper anyway. And also, every burn spell they aim at Edgewell Innkeeper is a burn spell they're not aiming at Love Struck Beast to try and take it off the battlefield. Love Struck Beast is always going to be at least a two for one. So um, my hope is they just cast Bone Crusher Giant here because they have nothing better to do. They attack with Dodger. Not going to block that. They could light up the stage, um, which would be a little sad, but. I think I'd rather at least force them to spend a card dealing with Innkeeper. Great, they had nothing to do. I am super happy about that. So, yeah, right now I'm just going to keep drawing lands, keep playing lands. Bay of Wishes is great. Love seeing that card. Um, just a 1-4 that draws a card is really good against Mono Red. And then also um, it'll come in handy later to get us something like a Pulse of Marasa or a uh, Return to Nature targeting an Experimental Frenzy, the kind of thing our opponent's doing over there. Uh, and if they cast a Torbrand, uh, Fae of Wishes can just go get Canada's Transformation to slap down on Torbrand, which isn't so bad either. Torbrand's definitely a good example of where we'd rather have Lava Coil or Frogify than uh, Canada's Transformation, notably. Hello, Hedron Bribe. Thanks for following the stream. Glad to see you here. Glad to see you uh, tuning into some sick Teamer Clover action. Feel free to light up the chat with suggestions on plays and so on. I... May not be looking at it all the time, but I'll try to, to keep a somewhat of an eye on it. All right, that's a Tybalt. And yeah, opponent can't get through Lovestruck Beast, just as planned. So now the question is, what are we trying to do about Tybalt here? Uh, ooh, Bone Crusher Giant. Did that do anything cool? So, huh. Also, pardon any sniffles, because I do have a bit of a cold tonight. Try to sniff away from the mic here. Anyway, so we've got a Bone Crusher Giant. Complicates things slightly. The uh, Temptation, of course, is just a Fey of Wishes for something. Um, so the problem is I can't Bone Crusher this Devil without losing Innkeeper, which is not something I want to do. Tybalt on his own isn't that much of a threat, though. Opponent still has no way of getting through Lovestruck Beast here. I guess Torbrand is the card I'm kind of worried about. So what if we just... Hmm, this might seem... Actually, there's almost a part of me that just wants to Fae of Wishes for Aethergust and leave up both Aethergust and Bone Crusher Giant. That might actually be kind of okay. Yeah, why don't we do... I don't even know if this is a good play, but it's the one I'm tempted to do right now. I'm really not sure about it. But, uh... Yes, yeah, so we'll go Granted, grab Aethergust. Yeah, the thing I'm really trying to do is make sure that I can work around a, uh... Poor brand if that comes down. Ether Gust is exactly the card for that. No tax here. And at this point, I kind of have enough cards coming off this Escape to the Wilds that I don't super mind losing Edgewine Keeper. I mean, we're not out of the woods yet by any means. Our opponent's got plenty of uh, burn available. And his main deck Tybalt is kind of slightly tilting, I would say. But not out of it either. Opponent does need to attack for. Some amount of damage to finish this game, I assume. Chandra, Acolyte of Flame. Boy, uh, that's going to make two 1-1s. One but between Bone Crusher Giant and being able to attack with Lovestruck Beast, I think we can just take Chandra out, probably? Boy, uh, I don't love to see her, but being able to throw down Lovestruck Beast at the end of this turn would just be really nice. I'm going to let Chandra resolve here. Not pleasant. We are dropping a little bit low. We're going to probably need to try and recycle this Fae of Wishes. Thankfully, we still have Plane-Wide Celebration on the board. Hey, Hedron Bribe, that's nice of you to say. Uh, yeah, feel free to ask if you have questions about Teamer Clover. You can also look at my uh, Reddit profile. Uh, just Reddit, uh, Aaron Gertler is my username. And check out uh, the article I wrote on Teamer Clover, which is hopefully pretty informative. All right, so opponent's coming in with some 1-1s one and the Tin Street Dodger. How important is it to keep Edgewell in keep? I think actually this is going to be the play I make. So I'm going to go ahead and block with Lovestruck on this. And actually, yeah, we'll block with Lovestruck on this thing. And then I think I want to go ahead and maybe just clear out the Devil token with yeah, actually, let's do this. Let's do this. New plan. I'm going to make this block and this block. I'm going to lose Innkeeper, but that's okay. I have plenty of cards to play. Drawing cards is not really my concern here. Kill the Devil. Um, then I am going to, I think, 
that bone crusher the dodger um i really want to get in at these planeswalkers this coming turn actually hold on this is dumb i should i need to keep innkeeper alive up oh, too late <laughs> all right so i made a mistake i think i need to keep innkeeper alive to attack with to get rid of these planeswalkers but let's see what the opponent goes for here i'm gonna go up my face with the devil and then at the end of their turn i'm gonna do something fun with Ether goes their devil here. This resolves. They lose the thing. Now. Yeah, this is interesting. I think I actually want to Ether Gust Chandra. Does that make sense? Because then I can Bone Crusher the Tybalt, cast a big creature. Yeah, this is rough. I did not go into this turn with enough of a plan. Now I feel a bit silly. Uh, let's kill the Dodger here. I'm not really worried about Tybalt at the moment. He's pretty easy to pick off with just a Fae of Wishes attack at some point if I want to. If we took an extra damage, we should be at 10. This deck is really hard to play. In case that's not obvious. <laughs> not an easy deck to play at all. Okay, so now we are going to... <sighs> Look at Chandra sitting there and feel a bit sad about our life decisions, I think. But let's start with Fae of Wishes. Into Bone Crusher Giant. Into play this. Hold up Ether Gust. Drop to seven, but it's okay because if we live through this next turn, which I think we should, we're going to be able to attack down Tybalt and then Fae of Wishes to go get Pulse of Marasa, which is going to be really good. Let's make a keep in mind they put us some Castle Embraths. Uh, yeah, let me send you this deck for a second, Hedron Bribe. So Hedron Bribe, what you're going to see for in a second in the chat is a slightly older version of the deck, but it's got almost all of the uh, all of the necessary cards in it here. And Hedron Bribe, the matchup against Simic Flash is excellent. Um, just generally, Flash decks that don't have a bunch of Bone Crusher Giants have a really hard time dealing with Edgewall and Keeper. So that's a plus for us. And the matchup against Simic Ramp is much harder. It's one of my least favorite matchups here. Does Slaying Fire kill me? No, Slaying Fire doesn't kill me. That's good. I'm almost dead. I'm going to one. Oh, they just, they just used Chandra for that. That's interesting. Okay. They want another devil token. Very interesting. Okay. They just passed the turn. Oh, Bone Crusher Giant's fantastic. That's a really good draw. Okay. So we're about to die to Slaying Fire, so we got to be careful about that, of course. Um, plan here is to attack. What is the plan here? We can kill Tybalt. We can Fae of Wishes, we don't have much to Fae of Wishes for. Hey, Kanye, thanks for hosting the stream. Shoot, that plus on Chandra was a great play, actually. Not being able to use Fae of Wishes here might kill, a, kill me. So I can transmute Fae again to go get Aether Gust again and hold off the Slaying Fire again. That might work. Even if it is just putting us kind of in a holding pattern with no availability for Pulse Marasa. I could also escape to the wilds. I don't think that really does anything. Kill the devil, but I can't get in to kill Tybalt with enough stuff here without dying to Slaying Fire. And I have one timeout, so I'm going to use it as I think here. But I think we're probably dead. I think... Uh, I don't know if I misplayed somewhere. This was a difficult game. Matchup's definitely going to be better when these Aether Gusts can come in to the actual uh, interactive cards here. Yeah, so we can't stop Slaying Fire... And killing us unless we get Ether Gust. And if we get Ether Gust, well, we probably die, but I think it's worth a shot. So I think we have to do the one thing that has any chance of working. Go ahead and get the uh, last Ether Gust here. And I think I uh, definitely can't be attacking down Tybalt here. So I'm going to click no attacks and just wait. The problem is because uh, Slaying Fire is an instant, they can just... Oh, they can actually use Chandra to get two Slaying Fires here, right? So I'm actually just dead if they play this correctly. Yeah, I'm just dead if they play this correctly, which I'm sure they will. All right, I'm going to give my opponent some credit and just scoop here because this isn't good television. You're at. All right, close game, close game. Um, Mono Red is definitely a matchup that we are not super well adapted to. 
Um, yeah, that's obviously going to be not one of our favorite matchups. So here we're going to bring in two Aether Gas. We're going to bring in a Great Henge, and we're just going to cut some of our slower cards. So Escape to the Wilds, you might notice there. Never really had a chance to get cast. I want to cut at least two of those. And the question is, do I cut the third, or do I cut like a Brazen Borrower or something like that? Uh, honestly, because Fae of Wishes just wins the game if we have enough time to like make use of it, because we just go get... Actually, possible I'm supposed to cut... I sometimes think about cutting some number of Lucky Clover and Beanstalk Giant in these much faster matchups. I don't have that much to board in anyway. I'm pretty comfortable with... Yeah, I think Escape to the Wilds being the thing that's getting cut is fine. I just really don't think that not having enough cards is going to be how we lose this. I think we just need to get on board. And Beanstalk Giant Lucky Clover is such a good combination that I'm pretty happy just to maximize the chance of that in, I think, just every matchup. Possible that Clover can get cut sometimes. Yo, Kanye, how's it going? We're against, of course, Mono Red. Who zoomed in? Thanks, Kanye. Let me uh, zoom that out a little bit here. What's going on with this widget here? Super new to streaming, in case it's not obvious. Playing around with stuff here. Box sources. All right, cool. Let me just yank this in. Alrighty then. So pull it down a little bit. Up. Perfect. All right. Thanks, Kanye, for the warning. Should be good now. This hand is extremely good. This hand is pretty much what I would ask for, I think, if I could just ask for hands like real pro. But mulliganing is not bad either. I like that. I like to see that. He drawn bribe. No, I don't care about sniping. People can come and snipe if they want to win. I don't know. To, to quote Jeff Hoogland, if people really want to win at Magic that badly, they are welcome to come in and snipe because uh, they, they need it more than I do. Also, ideally, if we have a really good draw with this deck, you know, people, uh, people should see their death coming and not be able to do anything about it. That's the true mark of a great, of a great Magic deck. Also, it's not like I'm even famous, for real, though. All right, so pretty okay just paying two life to leave a Bone Crusher Giant here. It's going to be incredibly obvious what I'm doing, but that's fine. Whatever. My opponent has to take a turn off of playing creatures when they want to be playing creatures to play around Bone Crusher Giant. That is okay with me. Nope, they're just going to hard cast this Empress Jewel Breaker. Nice 2-1. I almost don't want to kill it out of contempt, but I am going to kill it. All right, so, oh, there's the Lucky Clover. So, really not interested at all in doing that, right? Because I'm just going to play Love Struck Beast right now. And then if I draw a land next turn, I play the Great Henge and win the game. Yeah, Dex with four Love Struck Beast. Unless it's just purely a sideboard card, Great Henge is a heck of a card to be playing alongside that one. All right, so opponent's draw is just awful. Uh, and that's a great time to draw a tap land. Come on. Well, whatever. Uh, this game should be over anyway. Brazen Borrower. Uh... Uh, no, I don't really think I want that one. Like, fine. I feel like we can do better than fine at this point. I can't say often enough how much I love that this deck just plays just a bunch of good cards. Like, Love Struck Beast can just win games by itself sometimes, because that's just the kind of card it is. Torbrand looking real garbage right now. Let's just, uh, go ahead and Great Henge. And, uh... Just Aether Gust them right now because they can play burn spells in response to our Aether Gusting if we wait till their upkeep. <coughs> they have Ember Steel Breaker. They might be able to cobble something together here, but no, actually they're dead to Bone Crusher Giant next time. So this is uh game's over. Didn't actually need the Great Henge, but uh I think it's still better than what else we would have anyway. Yes. Well, sorry if that was a noise explosion for anyone. The microphone fell fell over for a second there. All right, so I guess there is a question of whether we want Ether Gust in the sideboard at all at the moment. Because uh, it's hard to find time to wish for it. We're often just going to be casting Fae Wishes as a 1 4. And if we do have time to wish, we're often going to be getting cards like Olsam Rasa or Gendless Transformation. 
How likely is it we really need to ether guess something in a situation where neither of these other cards will do? I actually think I like ether gust slightly more than brazen borrower. So having three ether gust on the board is new, uh, but the card is, as I'm certainly not the first person to point out, the card's really good right now. Lots of green cards running around, lots of mayhem doubles. I love being able to board in, like having one true sideboard card is nice, because you often have these matchups where just like one of your adventure creatures is just a little bit medium. Uh, whether it's Brazen Bar not having anything really good to bounce, whether it's Bone Crusher Giant not having many clean targets. And Ether Gust just tends to come in in spots like that, just increasing the overall card quality a little bit. All right. I don't necessarily feel good about this matchup on the play. It could be really ugly. But that first game was close. I just really want to draw some Love Struck Beasts. Yes, okay, deal. Keep. Can't really ask for much better than multiple Love Struck Beasts. Edgewell Innkeeper also looking like a good boy here. Let's just find some more lands and we'll be good to go. Yeah, sure. Came out a little slowly. I'm okay with Temple of Mystery. The slow third land, but it's fine. It does the job just fine. Runaway Steam can, okay. So now there's a question of whether I want to hold up Ether Gust for that. I think letting it live for one turn is probably worth getting the Scry off of Temple here. Pumping Ground's perfect, I love it. Oh, whoops. Okay, well, you'll notice I screwed up there because Edgewell Innkeeper was not the card I intended to play. In fact, I kind of just wanted to chump with a uh, with a 1-1 one -one there. I guess the benefit is that if they don't kill Innkeeper, I at least get to... Uh, Huh. Well, maybe we threw off their curve in a satisfying way there. Who knows? Ten Street Dodger coming down. Runaway Steamkins already out of giant range. You hate to see it. All right, so beginning of the opponent's turn, I think. I'm going to go with... So if I go tap Stomping Ground, next turn I can go Clover Bone Crusher. That sounds great. Let's do that. Tap Stomping Ground here, and then on their upkeep, I'm just going to Ether Gust. I'm going to Ether Gust the Steamkin now. I'll just Aethergust the Steam can now, whatever. Um, worst case scenario, they play Torbrand, hit me for three, and then I double Bone Crusher their Torbrand. Got the stop. And if they decide to go for Bone Crusher instead, we just go Lucky Clover, make four 1 1s with Love Struck Beasts, which is also pretty good and holds off Torbrand nicely. I forget, did they? So they threw the Steam can to the bottom. And there's Casting Bone Crusher this turn. Is that all they have? Wow, that's really good. Okay. So, the thing I'm thinking about right now is that the opponent could very easily have a copy of Emberth Shieldbreaker. So I think I want to play a... Well, I could just go Lucky Clover, get four 1-1s, one and then I have gotten a bunch of value from Lucky Clover anyway. Uh, yeah, I don't necessarily need to double Bone Crusher anything here. I guess it's a shame if they have Torbrand, because double Bone Crusher really is my answer to Torbrand. But if they have Torbrand... Don't play it next turn. Huh. Four one ones do seem good. Huge round bribe. It's just the problem is this deck often has so many different things that seem good. All right, I'm gonna. No, no one five five is actually just totally fine. They can't kill this five five unless they throw like several burn spells at it. So I'm just gonna do this for this turn. Um, try to see if I can scare out a Torbrand if they get a land next turn or something like that. Edge Willing Keeper the second is also excellent, so this draw has been really good. Love Strike Beast just shuts him down so hard. You want to play a Torbrand? Play a Torbrand. Play a Torbrand. Thank you. Look at this Torbrand. Look how hard we're going to kill this Torbrand. Just Bone Crusher Giant. So, uh, I'll just chump with Innkeeper, save myself six damage, and then have Love Struck Beast around next turn to soak up the Bone Crusher, but, hmm. Nah, that's not that appealing. Nah, uh, well, Love Strike Beast is actually super appealing, goodness. Kanye, you play a lot of mono red in your day. What do you think? What do you not want me to do here? If you're there, Kanye. Are you there? Are you there, Kanye? It's me, Margaret. Oh, man. I'm going to jump with Innkeeper here. I think the, uh... 
The cards are not something I'm gonna jeezel. Jeez. All right, so now I just play Lucky Clover. And I kill Torbrand now before they can throw burn spells at stuff. Bye. If they have another Torbrand, I'm a little sad, but... At least if they have another Torbrand, I get to play out some uh, more Lovestruck Beast action. See what happens. Still feels close. This mono red deck, of course, probably has some experimental frenzies too. Very cards like that, but with a Lucky Clover in play, I feel great. We could also go double burn spell. All right, so there's a Shield Breaker. We kind of expected that, but it's whatever. Already got our value out of that one. So more Clovers are absurd at this point. Uh, I'm going to spend a mana to deal a damage with the 10th Street Dodger. Are they going to attack and then try to burn the beast after I block their Bone Crusher? That'd be great. Love that. Yeah, so we're getting really good at drawing Love Struck Beast this match, which seems important. And uh, okay, so this this Dodger attack means it's very obvious that they have Slaying Fire, but I think I'm totally okay with them spending their turn on that anyway. Like whatever, Slaying Fire away, have fun. I think it's kind of a pain in the neck for it being evasive damage anyway. Oh no, thou hath slain me! How ever could I have predicted this terrible position? Oh wow, great hand. Okay, well. Uh, let's do this again, and then uh, hope they don't have another Shield Breaker. Yeah, our draws have been just completely unfair game, so I am sorry, Monored opponent. You actually did run into a deck that is one of your rare good matchups, I'm sure, but uh, I don't think this is going to... Okay, Tybalt turns off part of Great Henge, but not really the important part. Not the important part. Okay, so I just get to go Forest, Great Henge, Lovestruck Beast, Token, cast Lovestruck Beast, card, draw two cards actually. It's gonna be Concession, Henge plus Beast plus Innkeeper Draw. Let's see. Okay, so just land so far. Um, uh, do I want to kill Tybalt before it makes another token? Not really. I'm at 15. I'm feeling kind of really secure here. Worst case scenario, they have another Shield Breaker, but it seems like they probably just have lands and bad creatures. Vassal Embirth is still a card to watch out for. They could use it to like punch through... Punch the regular bow. So they can't punch through an enhanced one. They're trying to take out Innkeeper with this. Um... Uh, I think I'd rather get one more card off the Innkeeper here. There's a risk this lets them lay up the stage cheaply, but I think I'd rather get another card off the Innkeeper first. Okay, that is definitely an I-have-nothing play. Bay of Wishes, great. Okay, so... That one can't find me a permanent answer to Tybalt. I could... But, uh, can, uh... I can get Chandra. Chandra answers Tybalt pretty cleanly, and also just attacks down Tybalt, so it's... Go. Do to do to do, derping around, Fae of Wishes. Um, I could also just get Plain Wide Celebration. Yeah, let's just get Plain Wide Celebration for the ultimate, like, no, you're not winning the game, go away. Plain Wide, last Fae of Wishes. More cards. Holding on, very brave of them. Beanstalk Giant. Uh, I think I'm comfortable going to 11 just to put another creature down here. Hey, new viewers. Nice to see y'all, by the way. All right, so we're up to six creatures. So we can just kill Tybalt. Uh, I guess Faye wishes will kill Tybalt anyway, and then we gain quite a lot of life and start getting even more life off the Great Henge. And I don't think even the craziest sequence of experimental frenzy type things is going to bail our opponent here. Not even going to bother attacking with the love strucks yet. It's probably the kind of game that's going to end with a love struck with a stock giant being flung at their face in a couple turns. Wow, red cap melee. That is a uh, I guess that helps you get through love struck beast. I sort of get it. Yeah, that's a thing. This is like I feel about mono red exactly the way I feel about blue white control which is 
Modern Red players have chosen to register a deck that loses to Lovestruck Beast, much in the same way that Blue Eye players have chosen to register a deck that loses to uh, Edgewell and Keeper. And I just don't, those cards are so common that I can't imagine just choosing to register a deck that loses to them. Flat out. This is where they show off their Fry tech. So this is just going to be playing White Celebration. We're going to get back probably, I don't know, what are we doing this turn? Great Henge. Playing White Celebration gets back uh, Bone Crusher Giant so I can be sure to kill it. Torbrand effect. No, I don't have a Clover anymore. Uh, permanent Permanent gain four, gain four here. Get back Innkeeper, get back Bone Crusher. So I'm not thinking too hard about optimal plays at this point because all roads lead to Rome. Throw down Innkeeper. Pull up Ether Gust and Bone Crusher and um, opponent. Yeah, on no outs, especially with Fae of Wishes, the opponent's on no outs because we're going to be able to just mass manipulation their entire board in a couple turns at this rate or something like that. They have wishes also answers to brand, which is one of the last cards they have that would make an board. Uh, so let's kill the 10th Street Dodger. Hopefully finish this match up and move along to one be a little more interesting here, although it's nice to be able to show off kind of how we handle aggro. The uh, version played at the Mythic Championship by uh, Jean Emmanuel de Praz. He's like would have a much harder time with just these like random ladder aggro decks. I think it's a great choice for some formats, but she's going to struggle a lot in certain situations. Okay, so that's definitely just going to be go get mass manipulation and say, "All right, do the game, please." Good day, Astralial. Astralea. How's it going? We are uh, up against a player who really enjoys uh, watching their opponent do things. Maybe they're being inspired to play some Team or Clover themselves. But either way, this game will be over in a turn as soon as we cast the uh, Mass Manipulation. How much power do we have in play? Uh, uh, probably more than enough relief. I'll just play this way out in case. I don't really care about Aether Gusting their stuff anymore. If it matters. Clover also gives us a bunch of burn in case something weird happens. I keep saying in case something weird happens, but this is mono red. Nothing weird is going to happen. For Black, um, I have, for whatever reason, not been able to get Stream Deck to work. They, uh, I think, are in some kind of fancy beta program or something and wouldn't uh, register the commands, but let me uh, link you to that deck list in a hot second here. Astralea, hey, it's good to see you live here. Um, I almost never go live, so <laughs> you're not going to see me too often. And uh, yeah, so Briblek, uh, I'm about to post a deck list that's going to be really similar to what I'm playing. In fact, let me go update the deck list right now for just one second, so it'll be completely accurate. I'll put it up on screen as well, so y'all can take a look at it for a second as I uh, wait to jump into the next match. So up to rank 26, not bad. I got up to eight. Got up to eight the other night, uh, but unfortunately had some some hard run into Jun Hood, which is not my favorite matchup. So that's... Uh, that's a thing. Let's uh, pop open the Dream Decker here. It's going to be here somewhere. Or not the Stream Decker, sorry, the Scryfall. Update the Teamer Clover real quick. So here's the deck on screen for y'all. If anybody has questions about any of the particular cards in it, you're all welcome to ask, of course. Happy to answer those because I do spend a lot of time thinking about this deck. Oh, Scryfall still has me logged in? I haven't been in like a week. That's amazing. I have this program so much. Okay. This to growth spiral. 
Great hinge out. Oh, I had the growth spirals in my head. Great hinge out at a history event. Or I forest. Sideboard's actually changed a little bit here. I'm forgetting here, three Ether Ghost, one Pulse and Rasa, one some future escape to the wilds. Last escape. Thing. Ah, the Great Hinge. Okay, this should be uh, fully updated now. Just saved the new version. Be accurate, so let's jump into the queue for the next round. Uh, Bray Black, so the Flash matchup is uh, really, really strong. Um, so actually, ah, darn, I wish I could bring up... Uh, so I'm very new to Twitch, I'm not going to try to do anything too fancy lest I lose this beautiful overlay, but um, actually, let me actually paste a link to you real quick, and that'll uh, back me up where, instead of me just saying stuff, you can get some direct evidence of it. So I'm going to send you a link from to untapped.gg, which is where I store all my arena matches. I highly recommend y'all use it. In addition to getting like super clean records on like exactly what how your deck is doing, what it's good against, what it's bad against, uh, what the effects of different card changes have been, you'll also get to see uh, you'll also get to contribute to like public data sets. So we'll actually have a sense of what the real metagame is and how different matchups really go. And that's like really exciting to me because I love data. I'm guessing that because y'all are Magic players, probably some of you are that way as well. So let me paste this very long link in the Twitch here, but that'll take you to a page that contains my Team or Clover results. So. Um, yeah, so you're going to see, unfortunately, it kind of lumps decks together by color, so you're going to see blue-green flash and blue-green ramp in the same place, but uh, my current record against blue-green non-ramp decks is something like 8-1 and one with this, uh, and then red-blue you'll see as well. It's a very popular matchup, so I show it's 15-4 and four against that. Um, I think at least one of those was against some kind of weird non-flash deck that I lost to. Oh yeah, it was against like a weird blue-red mid-range deck, so I think I'm 15-3 and three against blue-red flash. Matchup's really good. Edge One Keeper's absurd. Uh, the fact you have a bunch of instant speed cards to keep up with their instant speed cards is absurd. Um, yeah, I think the matchup got a little a little trickier once Gadwick became a four of a popular four of because that's like an actual high impact card against us. But they just have a really hard time with both Lucky Clover and Edge One Keeper, which is a recipe for success. Yeah, Astralia, the deck's really good. Um, it is. Uh, yeah, I think it. I think I was at something like sixty seven or sixty eight percent on the season with Black Green Clover. Back when I was playing that a lot in the Oka metagame, and uh, this deck is just performing even better comparatively. Opponent is on the play. I have a double Fay of Wishes draw. If they have something aggressive, this hand is great. If they have something that's not aggressive, this hand is pretty iffy, but I think I'm okay for it. I hate mulliganing with this deck, and Lovestruck Beast should hold off any kind of rush long enough for Fay of Wishes to do stuff. I'm kind of hoping this is blue red flash, and we just get to kind of see what the deck can do to it. Ew, all right, more lands means I'm just going to play Temple of Mystery. I'm not going to bother Love Struck Beast this turn because I really want to make sure we're scrying other lands at the bottom. Which will get impactful stuff. This keep was kind of loose. I'll let y'all know this keep was kind of loose. Grixis. All right, well, if this is Grixis, I guess I don't mind the keep as much. Don't like mulligan against that deck. Grixis fires. Uh, this is not the hand I would want against this deck, certainly, but let's see what happens in the actual matches. Beanstalk Giant is kind of cool. At least uh, speeds up the pace at which Fae, which is going to be pretty good. Yeah, just so much random stuff in the letter. Ah, oh, Narset. That's a pretty good one. That's going to be able to, to draw two cards for them. The good news is, unlike Just Guy Fires, I'm guessing that Grixis Fires is going to have a really hard time actually killing us. So there's a chance we can kind of grind our way through them. Uh, do I play Lovestruck Beast or Blue Talk? I definitely play Lovestruck Beast here. That's not actually a question. So just Lovestruck. Whack Narset. At least we'll be able to draw cards if she uh, uses her ability again here. The fires and what comes off of fires now? Probably just another Narset? I guess if it's just another Narset, that's not so bad. Oh, they're like four color fires. Well, it's good news for 
It's not bad news. Solar Blaze is kind of bad news. All right, so we're just playing a bunch of weird cards that are probably not great. So, uh, shoot. We're going to play Bolas and like Tef next turn, and we're probably going to lose, but I think we just got to have uh, try and make this play. It's not my favorite thing, but we're just going to get Escape to the Wilds and uh, see if we can use that to draw enough cards to kind of climb back into things. Although I, I do not think this is going to go very well. Really needed a Brazen Borrower to bounce their fires or a little more aggression. Yikes, and more Narsets. All right, yeah, their draw also looks like it was pretty clean. Especially that Solar Blaze. Prison Realm. All right, so they're just... They really are relying on this fire. It's really hard to cast their spells. Oh, they don't have Nickel Bolas this turn. That's really good. That's really good news. Oh, they're bouncing their own fire so they can cast another spell. Okay. Uh, they didn't cast... What? Huh? All right, well, I'm, I'm confused by everything that just happened, but sure. Uh, sounds great. Uh, all right, so we're going to play Escape to the Wilds. We're just going to try and get as many cards as we can in hopes that we can eventually kind of come back and clean up our opponents a little bit. I'm definitely just going to cast Edge while Innkeeper this turn, because it's a thing. Everything we do that is a thing that forces them to react to it is good at this point. No use trying to hold back our cards. Another Escape to the Wilds is actually really nice, too. So the thing about this uh, Fire's deck is I'm guessing they're going to have a hard time killing us. I don't know what their uh, end game is other than just trying to, like... I mean, they probably have Fae of Wishes, and then Fae of Wishes probably gets terrible things out of their board and kills us, but... Um, for now... Not in the most unreasonable of positions. And they're probably going to be kind of soft in mass manipulation if we can pull that one off. They haven't actually cast any spells yet this turn. <laughs> Sarkin! Oh right, that's the win condition. Alright, so Sarkin comes down. What else? Sarkin's actually going to kill us in a huge hurry, so we're probably just going to scoop the game after this turn. Yep, yep, Sarkin, definitely a card they play. Uh, I mean, they, they apparently play every card based on what we've seen so far. Deck does not seem super well. Okay. Uh, I'm super into not taking eight damage this turn. This means I can kill Sarkin with a Bone Crusher Giant, which is. Oh, no, they have Bolas. Okay. This is going to be rough. All right, Brazen Borrower is a good start. What else do I need to go for? So I can Brazen Borrow the token. That doesn't let me kill Sarkin, though. I can attack, I can bounce the token, attack down Norse, draw a card with Fave Wishes, and hope that it's Bone Crusher Giant. Um, that might be about as good as we're going to get here, honestly. Yeah, losing Escape to the Wilds this turn, no matter what we do, is going to hurt. So, yeah, I can't get rid of Bolas. If I escape and hit Bone Crusher Giant, I can kill Sarkin, and then I'm not dead. Actually, that's kind of sounding more like the play now. Think about it. Oh, I screwed up though. So I just, uh, I definitely screwed up. So now I need to hit a red source. I don't need to hit a red source, but I should have played a red land there. All right, no bone crusher giant, which means they just get to have a Sarkin activation and we're dead. So I'm going to scoop this one up. We're also starting to lag here, notably. Hey, Pale Rider, thanks for following. All right, so let's, uh, obviously a bit of an ugly match there. Just kept a slow hand, not knowing we were up against and got punished tremendously. Uh, they definitely want some Aether Gusts here. The question is, what do I not want? Um, against a deck that's playing Solar Blaze, I can't say I'm the biggest fan of Lovestruck Beast. But Bone Crusher Giant's also a little loose. I like Raisin Borrow a lot for bouncing Sarkin tokens and also just bouncing fires. Uh, what else? This might be a matchup where I just want the fourth Escape to the Wilds. Yeah, so Papu, thanks for that. Something I'll try to keep in mind as well. Yeah, pretty interested in the fourth escape. There's a possibility I might even want once in future. You're going to discard, but probably not. Probably don't want to bend the deck that much. What am I cutting out here? All right, Astrolay, you're recommending Bone Crusher and Love Struck. That doesn't sound like the worst idea. Um, let's keep in mind they might try to board in Legion War Boss or something to be tricky. I don't think that would be a good idea, but they might do it. So yeah, I'm going to cut one Bone Crusher, one Love Struck, and actually, I might just cut a Growth Spiral. Just realizing how bad this card is against Narset, if we're trying to like do things on our turn and stuff. Um, 
like having some density of actual points. All right, this might be unwise, but I don't like diluting the adventures too much, just because Lucky Clover makes them all excellent no matter what. This hand, uh, you know what? Sure, why not? They don't have definitely. Well, they might have definitely Clarion. I don't know what's in their deck, but the fact they have Solar Blaze tells me they probably don't have definitely Clarion. And I like the idea of just being able to uh, draw a bunch of cards early. So the reason I went with Love Struck Beast there was not really any reason, I guess. Uh, nothing principled, at least. But it might inform their scries differently if they knew I had an interleague cube versus not having one. All right, Lucky Clover is a great draw. Means that once they inevitably wrath my board, we at least get to uh Yeah, I mean if they Narset turn three, we just kill Narset uh immediately with Love Stork Beast. So whatever. Alright, opponent's mana base is full of tap lands, which is going to not be the best story for them. They have a one they have duress. Oh wow, okay. Well. So see, duress is a really, really, really awful card to bring in against us, but people do it. People do it. We really don't have Lucky Clover as often as people think we do. All right, so we hit him. Worst case scenario, they definitely clear on, and then I just Fave Wishes for uh, Escape to the Wilds. Did I bring that card in? I might have brought that card in, but I can Fave Wishes for something else good. It's fine. Tough. Yep. All right, I think this is going to be one of those games where we just run them over on the play. RIP Clover, indeed. It's really sad. All right, so they have to bounce the Love Struck Beast and give us two more cards. I don't mind at all. Um, so we're trying to think about Solar Blaze. Is there any reason I want to play around Solar Blaze? Yeah, I think I'll keep wanting to keep her back for that reason. Get to F at the opponent. We're not quite at the point where we can use Fae of Wishes to uh, go grab an instant answer to Fires. So worst case, I guess they go Fires into Solar Blaze. But with all this card draw, there's a pretty good chance we can find something to hold them off. Or some more lands, that's fine too. All right, do you have fires into specifically Solar Blaze? Right. That specific combination of things. Fires into... Nope, okay, that's great. That's great, that's really, really good. So we're gonna draw even more cards. And then next turn we get to Fae of Wishes for Return of Nature to kill the fires. Bit of a landlord here, but that's okay. Um... All right, I am down for just casting Love Struck Beast raw. Don't need more one ones. And if I draw a Brazen Borrower, I'd love to be able to Brazen Borrower the Fires. Or I could play Lucky Clover. That's also pretty good. So yeah, let's play the Lucky Clover. Back our opponent around a little bit. And even if they have a Wrath plus a Planeswalker, I think we're far enough ahead of, that it's not going to matter too much. But we'll see. I mean, they do have a bunch of random stuff in their deck, so many things could happen here. Let's see. I guess they can have Ritual of Soot. Definitely Clarion. All right, so we get to keep Lovestruck Beast around and attack with it next turn, which is incredible if they just have a Planeswalker here. Look, a Nickel Bolas. Did we kill Lovestruck Beast? Do you think I have another 1-1? One -one? Wow, they're shook. Okay, they were just completely shook. Let's escape the wilds. Interesting. So my options are I could kill Fires... Uh, I just want to do that, right? I can also play Escape the Wild, so if I hit a Bone Crusher Giant, which I have three copies, that's great, but... Nah, let's just murder the fires and get something else good out of the sideboard here. So whatever we get could be Thought Erasure, but let's see what I want here. Uh, Shadrach can kill Bolas. I'll just take Mass Manipulation. That's a so we'll go for... Return to Nature. And Mass Manipulation. Astralea, I'm really tempted to, but I'm trying to like actually like do the right thing and make clean plays for all of you who are taking the time to hang out with me on the stream today. I'm trying to be a good person, you know how it is. So we'll play this, just so they don't know we have the fourth uh, blue source, just in case that informs their decisions. Kill the fires. We have endless cards we can discard at this nickel bullet, so I don't care about it too much. And if they don't have fires in play, I'm guessing the deck is completely non-functional. Uh, all right, so we'll discard Stomping Ground again, so they don't know that we have a blue source that we can throw away safely. And what's the play? Just a Tef. That's pretty great. I'd like to see that. I guess they might have counter spells. They, again, could have just about anything. Nope, just Narset. Okay, so that turns off our ability to do cool stuff with the Nickel Bolas, which is a little annoying. 
I could also just steal Narset. Let's see. So they have Thought Erasure, which means I definitely do want to steal something this turn. What's it going to be? Let's go with... Uh, it should definitely just be Bolus, right? Like, I'm just taking their stuff anyway. And I don't really have many good Narset hits at the moment. I'll take Bolus away from them so they don't have it anymore at the very least. Mine. And just plus it, because... Oh, wait, so we could plus four. We could minus two in Narset activation. That doesn't seem as good. Let's just make you exile something and probably put you in a position where you have to go to Bolus at some point. Sure. And unless you have a second Thought Erasure, I just get to cast Escape to Wild, which gets around Narset nicely. You need to kill Innkeeper. Okay. That is two copies of Thought Erasure. The question is, can we get rid of Innkeeper? If I get to start drawing cards off this Bolus after killing the Narset, that's going to be really good, too. But to be fair, opponents fighting back from was quite a good start for us. So, this matchup might be hard. I think Jeskai Fires, like regular Jeskai Fires, were pretty good against. Like, I'm used to playing that matchup, but with this deck where I just never know what's going to come out, it's harder. Alright, so all the Thought Erasures in the world, but can you kill or get rid of Edgewell Innkeeper in some way? Astralea, that is a cool play. Thanks for mentioning that. I had not even thought of that one. So we're going to attack first before we try to use Nicobolus. It works. Love to see it. Um, Ether Gust is also crazy good. Fae of Wishes drawing cards is also crazy good. I do think that despite their noble efforts, they're probably out of this one at this point. Hands are going away, sure. Fae of Wishes. I guess I should have played Temple of Mystery first, probably. Yeah, I should have played Temple of Mystery first. Before drawing with Nicol Bolas, certainly. Uh, so we'll do this. And now we have the option to either Aether Gust something or use Fae of Wish's ability to bring it back and double double wish. Yeah, Astral, I'm not, yeah, not super worried about winning. I think we're we probably have this one locked up. Sarkin comes down, I don't care about Sarkin. Um So I assume this is probably going to make a dragon token or something, but then I'll just kill it after bouncing the dragon token. Oh, they're plussing. Interesting choice. Ah, because they can attack uh, Nicol Bolas. I have Fae of Wishes to block. And I just bounce Fae of Wishes back to my hand anyway. So that's fine. All right, should have thought about that option a little bit more. But uh, yeah, this is the problem. Twitch chat is, Twitch, Twitch stuff is difficult. Go ahead and do, do whatever. Stuff whiffs. Alright, so I should have just Aether Gusted the Sarkin and not been lazy, but I do like being able to double Fae. What am I going to get off double Fae? Mm. Let's see. Let's find out. So Graveyard's full of lots of good stuff. I could get Plain White Celebration. I could grab a... Uh... Mm. Yeah, I just kind of want to get cards. Um, once in future, getting back Escape to the Wild seems pretty good. So I'll get once in future and also take another Aether Gust, I think. So I can, like, invalidate their next turn. All right, they're done. And yeah, I probably should have Bullis Uptick there first to see what I would hit. Didn't really matter in the end. Okay, so... I was pretty happy with that. One thing about Lovestruck Beast that's actually kind of important is against Teferi decks, it's really good to be able to have like like a 1-1 in play or something when they play their Teferi. Um, assuming that you have something else just so they can't like block, just assuming they bounce a Lucky Clipper for free. It's one of the reasons I, I kind of like Lovestruck being in against Fires for that reason. Um, And I do like the direct damage of Bone Crusher Giant. The fact that it can like hit Narset directly and turn off an activation of hers is pretty good. I almost wonder if Brazen Borrower might be a little worse than I'm giving credit for, just because against Jeskai Fires, Borrower bouncing like Cavaliers is great. But just bouncing a, like a Planeswalker that's already activated is pretty bad. The only thing that's really good against is Sarkin specifically. Yeah, Astralea once in future is pretty crazy. It's a great card. Um, Ether Gust good enough to be worth playing this many. All three copies versus having one on the board. I don't think so. The 
thing is, if I'm going to have a lucky clover in play, Brazen Bar already looks a lot better in some areas, but I think I still... I'm going to cut her. I'm going to bring in... Fourth. Maybe it's just Love Struck Beast here. It's Bone Crusher. I think I like Love Struck. I just like having random 1 1s attack to attack when I reset. Let's try this. Astrolay, yeah, that would be pretty cool against these Planeswalker Fires decks, but they're just not that popular. I think Deafening Silence is going to end up looking kind of silly if they're if you're getting double cavaliered, if I remember what that card does correctly. All right, first mulligan of the day. That's tough against the Potter Racer deck, but the sand is fine. Keep it. Uh, dump. Let me dump. This is Brazen Borrower because this is uh, the lowest impact card in our hand. Yeah, I think Brazen Borrower doesn't do enough without Clover. Probably going to get Thought Erasure, so be it. But hopefully we'll find an innkeeper or a uh, Cape of the Wilds at some point. But I do think this match was pretty bad, and we're probably gonna lose this game. This is my considered opinion on the matter. If they don't have a fire, or if we can hold off their early walkers, or if they don't fodder from Ether Gust, all of those things might work out. Nope, being fodder Richard. We sometimes just forget about this fodder Richard card and like how good it is. It's really good. Um. It's just like so much better than any of the cards that like Jeskai Fires can play on turn two that maybe there is something in this four color fires idea. It's also something to like drawing spells idea. Haven't uh, haven't gotten that far yet. Yeah, I don't have any idea what this matchup is like, but Mulligan against the Thought Erasure deck is never what you want to do. Right, so we could use Bone Crusher Giant to like directly target them, but I'd rather just dump. All right, another Bone Crusher Giant's interesting. Uh, so the likelihood that they have Deafening Clarion is reasonable, but I think I still want to be like playing out actual threatening cards here just to make them do things. Maybe I actually Love Struck Beast here. They then Tef, I feel sad, but if they had Tef, they would have just played Tef. I'm going to do this because it lives through Clarion, and it puts a clock on them if they can't get rid of the 1-1. And a lot of the ways that they have of actually getting rid of the 1-1 one, one, leave them stompable. Ooh, they don't have a Fire's Invention. Hold on, this is a totally different ballgame now. They don't have a Fire's Invention. Now we have lots of outs. They just fetched a Nickel Bolas. I have an Aether Gust. All right, I am uh, super interested in everything that's happening here, which is that we're just going to Aether Gust their Bolas and kill them. Nice Fire's of Invention deck of Are they really just going to play this bullets and die? Is that what's happening here? No? Oath of Kaya? Prison Realm. Okay. That's decent. They get to nail my 1-1, one, one, I assume. Or do they nail the 5-5? Five, five? Okay, they nail the 5-5. Five, five. Sure. So Prison Realm definitely turns on Brazen Borrowers being a really good card, which is nice to note. But do they not even have lands? They don't even have a land for Bolas. They did have a land, and they're going to play Fey of Wishes. All right, that's respectable. One did some reasonable things here, so we're going to stomp them again. The Bunker Shire Giants still attack pretty well and are hard to target. And if they play a spell into Aether Gust, we're going to get them pretty good. Patrick IJ, they definitely did keep a 7 without fires. I mean, their average card quality looks pretty high. Thought Erasure is a great card. Um, all right, and the Sarkin's actually are slightly problematic. The fact that the Sarkins are gaining them two life here is annoying. Sarkin goes away. I have lots of extremely good draws here. And more to the point is I'm not like immediately dying, which is pretty important. Temple of Mystery is terrible, of course. Um, I think... No, I'm not going to attack with the 1-1 here. I'm just going to attack with Bone Crusher. 1-1 one -one can attack a Nickel Bolas after it down ticks, which seems like it might be important. This game, I go to four, sure. I'm going to play Temple of Mystery. Hopefully find an Escape to Wilds on top would be great. Four more lands, all right. I'm going to go out here if they have a Deafening Clarion, so be it will die. By, uh, nobly, but... <coughs> Just a Sarkin, that's beatable. It's quite beatable. It's like... I want to draw anything. Brazen Bar was great. Another Bone Crusher would be fine. Escape to the Wilds, there we, we did it. All right, so uh, leaving up... 
Given that I have a red land in my hand, I'm happy with a blue-green. This should probably turn out well. Okay, that was, that was mediocre. I won't lie, that was kind of mediocre, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, attack down Sarkin here. Yes, yeah, attack down Sarkin because it turns on 1-1s one being able to attack, which is nice. Now it's close. Now I don't know what's going to happen. I have to hope that the draws off Innkeeper are pretty good. We've definitely been flooding and getting a lot of our flood out of the way, which is nice. They have to decide whether to lose Fabus or lose Sarkin, which is fine by me. You've got a lot of outs to surprise Brazen Borrower kills by bouncing Prison Realm. We have a lot of mana, which matters for future Fae of Wishes. Fae, Fae of, Fae of Wishes? I don't know how, how I would say that exactly. Then we go... Definitely Love Struck Beast. Two men's tapped. Of course, we're not going to play Innkeeper yet, of course. We'd rather hold that back. Hey, new subscriber. Hey there, Clacker. How's it going? We are in a really tricky match against... Normally I like playing random ladder decks because this deck's great against a lot of them, but uh, Grixis Fires is interesting. So drawing Fires would be pretty bad. If they did Clarion, that would be pretty bad. But fortunately, Edgewell Innkeeper turns a lot of our draws much better. Yeah, Clacker, how'd it go? How was, uh, how was playing the deck for you? Oh, shoot. Okay, we're starting up. That makes a lot of sense. I'm getting hit. Can I please just get a Brazen Borrower? <laughs> Brazen Borrower is so punishing to all these tokens. That's not even funny. Moonstock Giant. All right, so we're going to start with... Innkeeper. Island. Uh, definitely starting with Lovestruck Beast to see what I can find. Another Beanstalk Giant. All right, well, those will be pretty good later if I can pull them off. Let's, uh... Darn it. Being able to get rid of this dragon token would be so absurd here, but it's going to attack Sarkin, so be it. Either they lose the dragon. All right, they lose the dragon, still losing Sarkin, sure. And double Beanstalking is not the worst. Ramps up my mana a lot, and like actually playing creatures that are large enough to kill them is, is one way to win the game. Certainly at a high enough life total that I'm not about to die. And actually, how much mana do we have right now? We have uh, 12 mana? 12 mana almost puts us in range of being able to kill them with... Uh... Shoot, what do I exile here? Um, I think it's just a 1-1, one, one. is that right? It's just a 1-1. One, one. Because having this much mana, I'm like close to being able to like do Fae of Wishes into Fling and a Beanstalk Giant kill them. I think it's a 1-1. One, one. That might be really loose, we'll see. I just feel like they're going to wipe my board here or something. I need to rely on drawing something out of this anyway. Yeah, the fact that I'm going to 6 here is tough. Just need one Brazen Borrower this game. Really need one Brazen Borrower. What do we got there? Narsets? Oh, shoot. They've got Fae of Wishes into Solar Blaze? Opponent has no fear. Yeah, so Teth probably means I'm super dead to getting attacked by dragons unless I can get the Sarkin off the board. But they still don't have a way to stop me from attacking with Lovestruck Beast, which is neat. Oh, they could bounce Lovestruck Beast. That would, that would be a trick. Bouncing Innkeeper. Fascinating. All right. What else you got? Another Sarkin. Okay. That's definitely worrisome. But I'm one Brazen Borrower away from winning the game. Right, right. That probably does it. That's a Brazen Borrower. That's what I wanted. Let's, uh... All right, let's kill some Planeswalkers, shall we? Uh, yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Bye. Play Edgewell Innkeeper. Uh, play Brazen Borrower after that, or just play Beanstalk Giant? Probably just running out of this Beanstalk Giant, right? If I play Brazen Borrower... Can't quite play a giant. Um, I'm gonna kill, definitely killing Sarkin because I have to, otherwise I die. Um, oh, the nice thing about playing Borrower is that I don't die to another Sarkin, which seems pretty le pretty legit as like a consideration. So kill Tef. Oh, I don't anyway because I'm killing the Tef here. So we'll kill Nickel Bolas. Uh, yeah, these cards go away. And then if they have like Bone Crusher Giant, they could kill me with Sarkin, but I don't think that's a real. Operation. I think I'm just supposed to kill Nicol Bolas here. Ugh. 
Yeah, Clacker. Some people do have that experience with the deck. It can be medium at times. Uh, if I play Beanstalk Giant, they just have to stop Beanstalk Giant or they die. And Deafening Clarion doesn't do it. And a lot of other cards that they have don't do it. So I think I'm pretty interested in just Beanstalk Gianting. I don't think I'm going to die. If I die to some kind of like two damage effect that I was forgetting, then well, that's uh, that's too bad for me. But we'll try this. We'll try this. It's 12-12. Deal with it. Go ahead. Definitely Clarion doesn't matter. Actually, Definitely Clarion would let them get lifelink with Sarkin. Patrick, I, J I don't know why they didn't bounce Love Stark Beast. It seems like that would have been a better play, but it could be that they didn't know what they were going to draw off the Teferi. They might have like drawn Sarkin off Teferi and that like changed their decisions on the turn. I'm not sure. Definitely Clarion, okay. So they get to gain four life. I'm not dead. Sarkin's about to die. I have another Edge Wall Keeper, which they don't know about, so they're dead if they uh, don't have instant speed removal. Thought Erasure, no, my 1-1. One, one. You're a monster. I mean, that's okay. The fact that they weren't like playing better Planeswalkers mm -hmm. in the game is sort of the reasoning behind that Thought Erasure being in their hand. That's in a land, okay. So, uh, they're one short of being dead, which is annoying, of course. Uh, Yep, no top deck love strikes for me. I am just going to go ahead and start now with the play. <laughs> um, I'm going to kill Sarkin because it's going to be really stupid if they can just like kill my Brazen Bar or somehow or like go to Fairy. If they just draw to Fairy, I'm dead to Sarkin, which I don't like as a thing. So I'm going to do this. Put it in tapped. Hit Sarkin with this Beanstalk Giant. Um, play another Beanstalk Giant. And if they draw Solar Blaze, I feel sad, but. I do not know how many cards, obviously, of that card they have in their deck, and I would rather just have the kill in more, more scenarios here. Go ahead, opponent, draw land. Just draw a nice land and end the match. Are we done? Are we done here? Very time, Raveler. All right, we are not as done as I want to be. Um, that definitely means I throw out Brazen Borrower now because they're going to go to exactly 16. Can you draw a land now, opponent? I would draw land now. How would that be? But they also have no blue mana at this point, so a lot of their cards just don't do anything. Oh, bounces prison realm. Okay, that's uh, that's something. Uh, I don't really know how many cards they have that don't get them killed. I guess another Sarkin. Incoming solar is the thing that would be scary, but uh, they're gonna take out Beanstalk Giant. They're still dead on board. They can't cast any Planeswalkers now because they used all their Interplanar Beacons, which seems like a mistake. Auto Tapper may have foiled them here. Okay, they're uh, they're dead, I think. Yep, great. That was a... Uh, yep, I don't know how many mistakes they made there, and that was really, really close, but happy we got through it. So I'm just going to take a short uh, like two-minute break here to do things like blow my nose. Still getting over cold here, but uh, you saw a pretty exciting match there. At least we're bringing the... Uh, the viewers, the exciting matches. I see we got more people in the chat now. Yeah, um, I do remember playing uh, this guy Planeswalker was back when that was closer to being tier one, and that was yeah, Auto Topper is terrible with uh, with Beacon, fortunately. So just throw the list up on screen for a hot second and uh, take my very brief leave. Let me throw the deck list up in chat one more time here well as the win rate statistics for anybody who's just joined the chat and wants to kind of see how the deck's been doing. All right, be back in a minute here. Ooh, can I throw up a be right back? Be right back. There it is. Woo. Okay. That's that's the default screen, of course. As I mentioned, I'm new to streaming, but I'm, I'm excited that it works at all. I'm just excited that it works.
Have a good one, Astralea. Whoa, all right, hold on. There we go. All right, cool. So we're back in action now. Let's see if we can uh, go rack up our third straight win of the night. Maybe run into a tier deck. Wouldn't mind a nice tier deck to, to fence against. Hmm. That really was one heck of a match, though. I'm pretty glad I caught that one on video. All right, how is it gonna go here? They love to see it. Don't like that one. This one's fine. This is what we in the business call a don't have shock plea. I see copies of shock. But uh, honestly, just using Fave Witches as a 1 4 that draws a card is not so bad. This is definitely gonna be doing that here just to get ourselves back up to and resupplied. And the question is, do we attack into this? Opponent could have a uh, Spectral Sailor. I don't think it matters that much, the one damage. I wonder what kind of mono blue deck this is. Uh, hmm. We have the choice between Beanstalk Giant. Beanstalk Giant's really easy to counter, though. I kind of just don't want to get clinched. Go ahead and play another one for it. The fact that I have this Spare Fae of Wishes is also nice. Means I can attack pretty freely here. Um, at this point, am I comfortable trading off the Innkeeper for a Brazen Bar? Well, I don't think so. I think if my opponent's first two plays were Islands, I'm guessing they're going to have a hard time dealing with Innkeeper here. Wow, all right. So they're going to try and counter that on the way back down. Good luck with that opponent. We're getting some chip damage, which isn't so bad. This is Mono Blue. Okay, it's Mono Blue Flyers. Once again, we're up against the Rogue deck, but the uh, problem with Mono Blue Flyers is not only does it struggle with Innkeeper, it really struggles with just a bunch of Fae of Wishes. The question is, do I run Beanstalk Giant into their Quench in time? That seems fine. That seems fine to do. <sighs> they could also have Essence Scatter, and I'd really rather not see uh, just run to that one directly. Negate, okay. Well, I guess we could have been keepered safely, but we're going to do exactly that. Attack first, don't be lazy. So I don't want to take damage if, at all if I can help it, because I'm a control deck in this matchup, but I'm still happy to uh, get chip in where I can. I can't imagine them being able to profitably get rid of Fae of Wishes this turn. Mobilize District, cool, cool. One. It's not good against Fae of Wishes, of course, because four toughness is OP, but it is a neat card. Let's see, so... Running out Lovestruck Beast as a token run, uh, runs the risk that we just get countered, and then Lovestruck Beast uh, never gets to see the light of day. But the good thing is, if I Lovestruck Beast and encounter it, I can then Fae Wishes and go use Granted to get something. So I think it's worth a shot. I think it's worth a shot here. Maybe the 5 5 is well enough that I shouldn't just be giving it up this easily. Unsummon targeting Edgewell Innkeeper. All right. Sure. That, that plays. Cool. All right, well, I'm going to play Innkeeper here, because even if they do counter it, that's fine at this point. I'm just going to have a massively better board and a Fae of Wishes. Resolves, okay. Uh, so I'm, th in theory, giving them a chance to bounce it again if they want to. But this is just so ridiculously good for me that I don't even care. I could cast Brazen Borrower in response, draw a card off that. Uh, sure, I don't think bouncing any of my opponent's uh, cards looks especially promising here, so I'm just going to go ahead and run this out, draw a card. Uh, Patrick, IJ, so Essence, oh, I might have said Essence Scatter when I meant uh, Essence Capture, like whatever the two blue one that gives you a 1-1 one -one counter is, the Simic one, Essence Capture, yeah. Probably misspoke there. I'm an old man and remember old cards. Alright, so... You have a Gadwick? They didn't have a Gadwick, which probably means this game's over. Let's, uh... I have another borrower. When did I pick that up? Dual Innkeeper, I can't even keep track of what's going on. All right, so I'm just going to Innkeeper again if they counter it, so whatever. But they keep not being able to counter it, so it seems good for me. <coughs> I'm going to go ahead and attack with... 
Just the one fate of wishes, I'll hold one back to be able to block Brazen. Actually, I'll attack with Brazen Borrower too. If they want to trade their 1-1 one -one for this, it's fine. I don't think I can really avoid that, and it means that their future fairy miscreants are going to draw them cards, which is fine. I'll just play the 5-5, five because five, whatever. YOLO. Yeah, I feel like Fae of Wishes might quietly be a card that like really holds back some of these fire stacks. It's just so good against all the stuff they're doing. I assume they have like uh, the banner, like the plus one plus O card, but even there, Fae of Wishes still trades or blocks all their stuff. All right, go ahead in. And remembering that Mobilize District exists, so we're not gonna... Eh, actually, whatever. I'm gonna... If they wanna use Mobilize District to eat my 1-1, they can, because 12 spells at that point. They can also double block a Fae of Wishes, which is whatever. Hey! How's it going, Mr. ArenaCraft Pod? I know you have an actual name, too. It's just escaping me at the moment. Sorry. Uh, really focused on streaming here. But yeah, I love Tumor Clover. It's uh, just been extremely good to me. And uh, but certainly we've been crushing a lot of random stuff in the ladder so far today. Uh, I'm not super interested in more tap land at the moment. So we are tapped down. They could like do borrower things to us a little bit. Let's go. Let's actually just go with this. We're going to do this. And we'll love struck beast twice, and then we'll double borrower their borrowers when they cast a borrower at the end of the turn, and then hopefully that'll be a concession borrower. Arjuna, yes, sorry about that, dude. But uh, it's really good to see you again. Thanks for the podcast, by the way. Um, funny story about that. Not only uh, did uh, my wife enjoy it, and I'm sure that like actual uh, magic folks enjoyed it, but one of my coworkers mentioned that they downloaded, even though they know nothing about Magic the Gathering, just because they wanted to hear me talk about something for a while that I was excited about. Um, so that was that was pretty funny. All right, so this blast zone is like cute, but it's not gonna matter at all. So this is nice actually, because it means I get to hold off on using borrower until the clover's gone, so I get to keep it around afterwards. Get out of here! Don't want you. Okay. Ouch! Got quenched. All right, not bad, not bad. All right, so this is where we go ahead and get the concession Chandra out of the board, which is what we do against all these blue decks. Session Chandra has been activated. <sighs> oh, subscribe back check. Scrybug. I'm, I'm being facetious here, by the way, for the benefit of future people. The Scrybug is not real. Do not, uh, do not believe in the Scrybug, please. Activate this thing. Chump loves truck. Matter. Held it for a while there, uh, sideboard-wise. So against any kind of flash deck, there's always... I often, like, at least consider going for, uh... Cutting some Escape to the Wilds just because it's expensive. Hey, Arjuna, thanks for the follow. i cutting a couple of Escape to the Wilds because it's expensive and just bringing random cheap things that interact. But... I don't have that much cheap stuff that really acts for them. I, like, have Pulsa Barasa, but it feels like... Frequently, my stuff's not even going to go to the graveyard? I'm puzzled here. Uh, Great Hedge is nice if I can keep a Love Struck Beast around, because it's a little, a little cheaper than Escape to the Wilds. It gives me a life buffer. I might just make that one for one swap. Something like that. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't even know if that switch is good, but it's probably fine. I have four Love Struck Beasts, so there's a good chance I'll have one out at any given point. Yeah, sure, run it back. We might not draw three Fae of Wishes in Initial Keeper again, but I think most of our cards are just good against most of our opponent's cards, so I expect we'll be fine. And super good! We're going to see again if our opponent can beat a Terminal Edge Wallen Keeper. 
The Terramander is moderately more dangerous than some of the stuff they have in the deck. Want to watch out for. Okay, so now what? I don't necessarily just want to run Clover right into a uh, quench here. And they also have Negate. They have Main Deck Negate. So I think they definitely have Spectral Sailor. They must have Spectral Sailor in their deck. But I don't really want to run out Edgewell Innkeeper. No, say no attacks here. End the turn. They might borrow, borrow the uh, Innkeeper. Okay, Spectral Sailor. We knew about that one. There's a question of uh, whether I should Brazen Bar or something now. Yeah, I guess I will. Worst case scenario, they have Mystical Dispute. But nope, okay. So Terramander's gone. Slows him down a little bit. Get the draw card and block something with uh, Brazen Bar soon. One thing that's a little iffy about this deck against random aggro is that our lands tend to be really quite painful. But, ooh, Fae of Wishes is great, actually. Let's go. In that case, I'm going to go with of mystery and just cast fate wishes and block all their stuff. Great. Bone Crusher is ready. Really good one. So we've now entered the phase of the game where our right, opponent has successfully countered my one for my two mana card that drew a card. Good work. Uh am I into attacking an innkeeper? No not yet. Got plenty of life to play around with. And then I need to be able to counter both my clover and my bone crusher probably. Are you going to play Heraldic Banner? They might be I'm, I'm almost certain they're playing Heraldic Banner. That feels like a card you would have to play in this kind of deck. But I haven't seen it yet. Maybe this is Gadwick? They're probably playing Gadwick, right? they got to be playing something sort of sweet and big. Thinking about something. All right, it's Gadwick, sweet. So Gadwick means that I get to resolve all a Lucky Clover, uh, kill all their stuff, and Gadwick itself is still annoying, but... I think this probably, probably is going to let us think. Let's see. Just because this combination of Beanstalk, Giant, Lucky Clover, and Edgewell and Keeper will just go completely nuts. But we do have to actually be able to block their stuff, so let's, let's not get too cocky. Double Beanstalk. I want to counter this, that means one less blue spell that we'll use to tap the Bone Crusher Giant, which is cool. They really want to counter this. Or bounce Lucky Clover for all the good that's going to do them. Alright, yeah, you really, they really had to do that one at uh, a different speed than they chose to do it at. Right. Okay, so doing some out loud thinking here. If I uh, if I cast Bone Crusher Giant now, they get to cast Brazen Bar and just tap it for free. And then I do a one because they have Mobilize District. And that does not appeal to me very much. I think I'm gonna try and use Brazen Bar as an instant to block their borrower, which at least stops them from attacking with Mobilize District. And the question is, do I cast it now or do I wait until they attack me? If I wait until their turn, they could counter it. But this gives them fewer ways they could use to play spells and tap it down. Play it now. All right. Yeah, so Gadwick actually, it's, it's starting to look like we're probably not going to win this one. I think Gadwick's probably going to let him get just enough tempo to take us out to play here. They don't have any spells, so let's see what happens. Also, if they have counters, they now can't actually use the counters to do anything. Okay, they're actually letting me take out one of their creatures, which is incredible news. I loved that. Love that. Maybe another Gadwick? I don't think what this could be. It's another Gadwick. All right, so they're going to draw some more cards, but this also taps them out. If I can just kill Gadwick. They should never be able to do anything to me ever again. That's cool. Uh, I'm going to start with Clover into Beanstalk.
put it red. And then I'll cast Bone Crusher before Temple of Mystery, or before I Temple of Mystery, just in case I draw a Fae of Wishes off of it. Or I guess some other thing. Not just a forest, alright, so we're flooding a little bit, but Temple. Oh, no Steam Vents, sorry, right, just need one Fae of Wishes. Something of that nature. Not feeling as good now, though. That turn did not bring us very much stuff. Terramander also is not that scary, but it's scarier than it was. Is it time to start chumping with Edgewell Innkeeper? Given that Terramander is lethal by itself? Maybe, but... I think no, I think no. I think it's worth it having this around. I mean, this can still chump in the future. It's nice to be able to actually draw cards. Raisin Bar was pretty good, okay. So... This feels like it's gonna be... Cast a Beanstalk Giant this turn? Probably gonna cast a Beanstalk Giant this turn. I'll counter it, and then we'll go from there. Right, Beanstalk Giant coming down. How's a card? It's countered, I'm sure. No, it does not get countered. Wow, we've drawn all of our forests. I'm going to play this untapped land in case they have Quench for my, one of my Risen Borrower triggers here. Certainly not in a position where I can afford to attack yet. Are we going to do anything end of the turn? Ether Gust with the Instar Giant, tapping down the Bone Crusher Quench. Sure. So, in response to this, I think I'm supposed to bounce the Terramander and the Gadwick. Uh, a little sad to let them recast Gadwick, but I feel like otherwise we're just like way too likely to die. I'm really just looking for Fae of Wishes here, because if I can get down Fae of Wishes, I can get Chandra at this point, because I have infinite mana. Uh, do I put this on top? I have one island and one forest left in my deck. I think I'm okay with this going on top. Sure. So, Gadwick definitely being annoying. I do miss the days when I had three Mystical Dispute in my sideboard for, for that reason. But it's still it's still a game. Actually, no. If they can Gadwick, can they Gadwick into Terramander tap into Mobilize District? I think they can, actually. But I can have Bone Crusher Giants. The question is, are they going to do that? All right, so that play was actually a losing play. I think everything was a losing play there. Let's see if they see what they can do. They're willing to risk it. Okay, well, they uh, cast Gadwick X plus one, but they tapped Mobilize District, which I feel like that probably wasn't what they meant to do. I'll take it. I don't mind that. All right. Stuff's tapped. What are you going to do about that? Like, what's the... Actually, putting bone pressure on top was probably a bad idea. I probably shouldn't have done that. All right. Well, live and learn, I suppose. Use Beanstalk. Thin the deck. Oh, I had one island left. Oh, I miscounted my basics, so I'm down to six forests. Oh, all right. So actually putting that on top, I mean, putting that on top is a bad decision either way, but definitely getting extra punished here. I'm going to go ahead and run up our because I really just need to find something. That's another land, huh? All right, so we're dead. Yeah, we're going to die with the Terramander. They must have a blue spot. Scoop. All right, Gadwick did the thing. We also flooded real, real, real hard there. But overall, the matchup still feels like it pretty heavily favors us. Uh, notably, I actually think I like Escape to Wilds maybe a little bit more than I've been thinking I do, just because it's so good against a resolved... Gadwick, like just following up their Gadwick with an Escaped Wilds from us is really strong. They're going to be tempted to tap out for that card. The question is, do I cut something for it? I wonder if it's Beanstalk Giant. Any card, but it's so slow and clunky against them. I don't really need it to attack to win. I'm going to actually cut a Beanstalk Giant and put in this last, put in a third Escape to Wilds. I don't think I want all four, but I feel like I might have more chances to resolve that card than I realized. Yeah, that works out for us. All right, one Edgewell Keeper. Hey, Sepha DJ. I uh, 
Yeah, I'm almost never live, but you did catch me. That's not a good hand. Oh, Lord, is this what's happening? I think I keep this. I think I'm going to keep this because if I find a red source, I'm actually going to be just fine. This has lots of great interaction with a red source, but we might just die to our own openers here, unfortunately. Oh, that's very tempting. That is very, very, very tempting because I can't do anything about it, but I think I'm forced to bottom it. I think we just need lands too much. Overwhelmed Apprentice? What? Oh. Oh, that hurts so much. It hurts so much. They milled two lands. No. Uh, well, we do run 27, so maybe we'll find some more somewhere. This card is so bad. I can't believe they're playing this. It doesn't fly. It doesn't do anything. All right, Drew Land, that's excellent news. I, uh, pretty sure I just want to run out this 1 4. Something that blocks. Keep our life total high until we can, like, draw more cards and get back into this. Okay. Yeah. Every, kind of get everything we want here, which is cool. Um, we go ahead and Heart's Desire here. If they negate this, that's fine. Whatever. Nope. Just end the turn here. I guess I could Brazen Borrow the 1 1. That would be okay, I think. I'm not going to start attacking yet. I'm going to try and hold out. Raisin Borrower on the Fey of Wishes. That's a I think responsible to Bone Crusher the Apprentice. Okay, so we're in the game. We need them not to have like a really good like Gadwick type curve here. But we're in the game. That's a Mystic Sanctuary. Okay, good. No, that's a thing that exists for them. Uh, there's nothing they have that I would mind 1-1 one -one trading for, so whatever attack. Spectral Sailor, sure. You want to block this 1-1? One -one? Have at it. Have fun. They really wanted to block the 1-1. One -one. Okay. I'm down for that. Uh, let's go ahead and... Uh, this is a great time to use Fae of Wishes unless they have Mystical Dispute, which they do. Ouch. All right. Well, never mind. Or the Fool Eye. All right. So probably time to start thinking about actually attacking our opponent here. Are they going to do? Are they going to Gadwick? They do. All right. Sure. Can I get a Lucky Clover, maybe? Lucky Clover would be really good. Cape of the Wilds is not bad either, though. Uh, this is going to be... Fertile Footsteps, Grab a Mountain. Like, we might not get to resolve anything here, but... Maybe they'll cast a Terramander or something like that? That'd be cool. I'd love to see a Terramander. No such luck. Okay. Alright, so, to be fair, we haven't missed land drops yet, despite everything that happened. Alright, so we maybe missed one, but, you know, we hit the important ones. So for DJ, um... Yeah, this uh, this deck is definitely still working for me. You can see the link above where I posted my win rate. Um, seemed like it's been pretty good. But of course, results will vary for everybody. So Edge Roll and Keeper into Lovestruck Beast. Yeah, I just want to draw some cards. Just want to draw some cards. I should have held up Red Mana. That was a mistake. Definitely have held up Red Mana there. Lose Bone Crusher when they cast this Brazen Barber. Bay of Wishes is really good, though. All right, so we're going to drop to a low life total, I expect. We might still be able to claw our way into this. Let's see what happens. Borrower, sure. Tap low struck, okay. Kill a bunch of their stuff. No blocks. Are they going to use Blast Zone? And cast another Gadamic? What's going on? They used Blast Zone. Wow. That's so aggressive. Okay. Um, let's, uh, go ahead and Bone Crusher now, I think. If I can kill the thing. Okay. Go to negate. Bench won't do it. No negates. Okay. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, do I Fae of Wishes now? No, I think I Bone Crusher Giant. That's going to force them to burn a bunch of spells if they want to actually attack me. Yeah, so we're going to craft pod. Uh, I definitely know what you're talking about. I think Jun food can be kind of tough for us. 
Oh, all right, they had a lot of cheap blue spells. Okay, that is the their deck's job, I suppose. What's the play here? What's the play? What's the play? So, I think it's Fey of Bushes. Countered, it's going to be tough. But they would need to have... I guess if they have Brazen Bar, we're going to just die, don't I? If I had a Brazen Bar, bad. Uh, going to get Pulse. What's in my graveyard here? We keep around a Fey of Wishes. All right, so that makes me want to grab a uh, Wholesome Ross to stay alive. The Temple of Mystery. Yeah, Arena Craft Bot, I think the Nissa version still feels fine to me, honestly. But, uh. You know, I don't have that much uh, total experience with against it. Poisonbar, Spectral Sailor, okay, not dead yet. Not dead yet. Am I dead now, though? Okay, so they had the win, and they decided not to take it, but they're going to get the perfect victory. All right. Opponent found the way. Ouch. Yeah, Sefa DJ, I never liked that list much. Just lost. Ah, oh, all right. So now we're lower than we started, of course. That that mulligan sucked. But, I mean, interesting match. So props. I thought the opponent's matchup looked awful after that first game, but they managed to uh, sneak around us with the Gadwicks in the second and third. But now I'm definitely hungry to at least get a win and finish off the night. That was uh, an annoying one to lose. Yeah, I, th I feel like Mono Blue might actually be better than like the blue red builds just they have so many cheap spells which is what you really need to do to keep up with clover to be fair i guess gadwick was the only card that won them every game there the toughest creature is definitely annoying uh huh this is a weird hand i'm not sure how i feel about it I think it's fine. Double escapes a lot. One's using lightning bolt sleeves. Yeah, Arena Craft Pod. The thing is, their deck just doesn't have that many instants and sorceries, it seems. I mean, it's like, it's basically free for them, so it seems fine, but. But about on this island, I think I'd rather have red sources at this point. I don't think, if I'm finding like lands that aren't red, it doesn't help me at this point very much. Ugh. All right, so Lightning Bolt Sleeves hiding a blue-green ramp deck, of course. All right, red mana is definitely helpful. I'm going to go ahead and stand a Lovestruck Beast token here. More red mana is a no. I need to look for things like Beanstalk Giant to accelerate these Escape to Wilds or Bone Crusher Giant to kill Risen Reefs. So I'm in this one. Yeah, blue-green ramp's a rough matchup. Definitely one where you have to like have a pretty solid draw to stand a real chance. Lovestruck Beast is helpful just because it can actually block Nissa land. Not my favorite clip to see. Uh, let's strike here. All right, there's the Risen Reef. Okay. But they are low on lands because our Burrow Grazer is a terrible magic card. Don't never forget. Never forget how bad our Burrow Grazer is. Um, all right, so my play here is going to be Lucky Clover, and I'm going to hold up Double Borrower. Reason being that I would like to be able to, uh, if they play a second Risen Reef next turn, I'd like to be able to bounce the first one in response to that, so they're not getting double trigger. They make the smart block, so good work there. Second Risen Reef, all right, so in response, we'll just do the thing we just discussed. Goodbye, goodbye. The double Reef is still scary, but... Hopefully one of these Escape the Wilds can find us a Bullet Crusher Giant and we just take them all out, which would be great. Alright, so they're still stuck on lands. That's terrible news for them. Bay of Wishes is interesting, but at this point I just kind of want raw cards. Attack first before they know what we can do. See if they're tempted to block the 1-1 one -one to maybe turn off my Love Struck Beast. Nope, not tempted. Alright, let's see what we can find. Okay, well, we found Bone Crusher Giants. 
We found all of the Bone Crusher Giants. There they are. <laughs> okay, so opponent stumbled and died. Uh, they're attacking with the Risen Reef in a show of defiance. Very bold. Uh, yeah, okay. Games 2 and 3 are going to be harder than this, but at least we get some Aether Gusts. At least we get some Aether Gusts. Uh, this is definitely this is definitely the biggest pog in the... Oh, no. Winning, winning that game against Grixis was the biggest pog in the night. Opponent's still fighting. Opponent is fighting, but it does not matter at all. I think we're just going to do it ahead and deal all the damage with Bone Crushers to the face to be sophisticated about it. We are a magic player of culture. All right. All right. Games two and three do get harder than that. Yeah, the problem is there's not even anything easy to cut. It's like our cards are not bad against them. It's just that none of our cards are good against good enough against them without the benefit of a lucky clover. Gonna go for two ether gust. Uh, nothing else I especially want on the sideboard. Escape the wilds is okay, but not like I want four of them. Level good. Uh, Bay of Wishes is one of the weaker cards in the deck. Um, we just generally don't want a bunch of them early. They don't attack very well. And probably Brazen Borrower is a little worse than Bone Crusher Giant. Killing Risen Reefs is so important that we definitely want the Bone Crusher Giants. And Bouncing Nissa is good. It could also be the Love Struck Beast goes. Actually, Love Struck Beast. I guess I can't kill Love Struck Beast this world. We want to keep all four of them and bring in the Great Hedge. But I think I'm down for just like pursue pretty much our original plan and keep uh, some Aether Gusts in. Still going to be a struggle to win this one. This is a hard matchup. This is maybe the only major deck in the entire format that I don't have a winning record against. Ew. I wrote it down this hand is I don't like it very much, but got double beanstalk. Got all the colors. I, I do not mulligan hands like this enough. I'm going to experiment with actually mulligan this one. Alright, this hand is probably roughly as good. I'll keep it. Uh, throw back the uh... Island here. Uh, I want to go forest, make a token, temple of mystery, make a token, stomping ground for red mana. So I'll put back the island, even though I cast borrow right now. All right, draw the island immediately. Sure. Possible their draws going to line up such that two five fives and maybe a brazen borrower on a uh, cavalier at a crucial moment will work. But I'm not like super hopeful about that by any means. Okay, more lands. Can I please get an Escape the Wilds or a Lucky Clover? Fay of Wishes, sure. We have to do it, so we have to do. Uh, so by far the best Fay of Wishes target in this matchup is Mass Manipulation, but it does usually require some clovering and some bean stalking before that actually does anything. Oh, yeah, the not doing anything, which is kind of cool. I don't... I hate the part where they're not doing anything. They could either go to Lovestruck Beast if they want to. Things are not growth spiraling. I am down for it. Or that's fine too. The game is not going to be lost for want of Lovestruck Beast. The fact that this Nissa is not coming out. Hey there, Wolfgang, pass off 94. Good to see you. Good to see you here. Oh, that's another Lovestruck Beast. All right. Maybe we just get the endless 5 fives kill. Who knows? Um, I'm going to go ahead and play out uh, this. More is always more where that came from. More counters? If they just have like another counter into Anissa, of course, we're like stupendously far behind. But uh there are worse things we could be doing than this. Solved, cool. Good thing I have Brazen Bar. Alright, Cavalier Thorns, that's not even Anissa. I think we might just like tempo them to death here. Like if we draw an untapped land, they missed on lands too? Good lord, that's bad for them. All right. Um, yeah, this feels like easy. Just deal eight damage. Go. Let's do this. Goodbye. Lucky Clover. Uh, I think actually no at this point. Okay. Okay. 
want to be finding more brazen borrowers in these like maybe bone crusher giants i don't know so they're real really close to death they kept what seems to have been quite a bad hand all right this time they hit land what did they put in the graveyard there I mean, anything that powerful in the graveyard. Look at that. Look at that. Leaf Conjure in time? Leaf Conjure. All right, so... We didn't die in the early stages of the game. That part was cool. Fae of Wishes. All right, actually, let's do this. One copy of... Oh, I just, do I just Aether Gust or do I kind of just Transformation? I just Aether Gust, right? Kind of just Transformation is dumb. Just be like, put it back. Not doing this today. Go away. Let's just get you into Bone Crusher range, shall we? Okay, Love Star Feast did, did it. Yay, I'm pretty glad I put the fourth one back in this deck over the Escape to Wilds. All right, so we end up, I think, exactly where we started. Yes, yeah, FDJ, so um, I think this is my last match of the night. I like to keep these streams on the shorter side, but let's uh, talk again through kind of what we did. Yeah, Arena Craft Pod, that's how you beat Blue Green. They, they keep bad hands and you run them over. Feels really good. So we went three and one, and we ended exactly in ranking where we started. It is hard to go high in Mythic, but, you know, given that I'm playing this deck that is nowhere near anyone's the top of anyone's tier list. I'm pretty happy to be doing as well as we're doing. Um, and we did at least run into a tier deck there. So yeah, let's show off a uh, deck that I'm still calling RUG Big Clover in my deck box for whatever reason. So uh, Steph DJ and all the other viewers, I'm just going to talk about the deck a little bit and then sign off for the night. Thanks all who came to hang out. It was really good to have you here. So uh, this deck. Um, so... I actually am going to quickly link to the Reddit post where I wrote about the like earliest version of the deck in more detail. It's still, it, it's sort of remained quite similar throughout the entire thing. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm also going to link to uh, here. So shout out to Arena Craft Podcast. They actually interviewed me about this deck and I'm going to link to that uh, Reddit post on that interview episode here. So that's a podcast where I talk about the deck in some detail. And then this is going to be the uh, original Reddit post where I wrote it up. Um, should mention, of course, it's not my original deck idea. I mean, it's pretty hard to have an original deck idea in this day and age. But I stole it from somebody who uh, ran me over with it while I was playing a much worse Sultai Clover deck. And yeah, so Seven DJ. So right now I'm always playing around with the deck. That's the thing. It's like I don't think this version in particular is optimal by any means. I'm always testing and trying new things. It's completely possible the optimal version of this deck, for example, just plays like Nissa in it or something. Cards that I've abandoned a while ago just because I didn't quite like the way they felt. But uh, so. There are a bunch of obvious, so the first thing I should mention about the deck is like why I'm not playing the version from the Mythic Championship. So what happened in the Mythic Championship was that uh, Jean-Emmanuel de Praz, a French professional player, uh, decided to try this deck out after the Reddit post went up. He played against Fires a bunch of times, like uh, a friend of his who was playing a Fires, and this like played over and over again. He didn't like the Fires matchup very much. I don't blame him. The Fires matchup um, is really tricky um, before you get used to it, and is tricky after that too. Um, it's not the easiest of matchups. Once he saw the Fires matchup was a bit lacking, he decided to build a version that ran things like Main Deck Return to Nature and a bunch of Hydroid Crisis. Just because Hydroid Crisis, in combination with a bunch of Growth Spirals and other Mana Ramp, is like a great card against Fires. One of the reasons that the Ramp deck is so good against Fires, for example. And that version had some advantages, like Hydroid Crisis is a great magic card, and being able to play a bunch of Growth Spirals lets you kind of find things like Clover a little bit more consistently, um, it lets you Ramp more consistently. But... I still like the version where I'm playing instead of more Growth Spirals and Hydro Crisis, Edgewell and Keeper and Lovestruck Beast. Because Lovestruck Beast, at least for... My, I think Lovestruck Beast might have been the wrong choice for that Mythic Championship because there was no aggro. But um, on the ladder, you're going to run into a bunch of people playing not only pretty good aggro decks like Gruul, you're going to run into like what we ran into the first match of the stream, which was Mono Red. You're going to run into uh, decks like... Random Knights decks or Red Black Aggro. You're just like, I hit all these different aggro decks that people like to play on stream because they're fast to play and fun to play and sometimes even pretty good. Um, and Lovestruck Beast just like puts a hard no on a lot of those decks. I, just, I think it's just too important. It's too easy to just get run over if you're playing Growth Spirals and trying to ramp to Hydra Crisis early. 
and then Edge Dwelling Keeper, in addition to just being like much better once you have Love Struck Beast, because it's just like more adventure creatures. Um, it's also a one one that powers up Love Struck Beast, which is pretty good. Um, Edge Dwelling Keeper just like crushes blue decks. Like um, we did manage to somehow lose to Mono Blue on this stream through a succession of awkward draws, but um, in general, you just slam this card down against like blue green flash or uh, blue white control. And they just like have a really hard time dealing with it. It's going to just sit there and draw you like two or three cards over the course of the game. And the great thing is that even against decks that can kill it pretty easily, like Mayhem Devil decks or decks with a bunch of Bone Crusher Giants, you don't have to just run it out there. You can just like wait until, you know, turn four or something and just play Edge Willing Keeper into your Love Struck Beast, your Bone Crusher Giant that you used already. And then it's just like, it drew a card and your opponent has to pay attention to it. Sometimes they can kill it for free with a Mayhem Double Trigger. That's why we don't like Mayhem Double decks much, but often they have to actually spend. <coughs> Sorry about that. They have to actually spend a real card on it. And then it's just a clean two for one that costs one mana. Edge Dwelling Keeper is so good. You should play four. You should just play four of them. Anyway, um, on to some of the individual card choices that are a little different. So um, I'm currently on two Growth Spiral um, and three Escape the Wild. So the, I consider basically all the, the cards in the deck that are fixed, like four Edge Dwelling Keepers fixed, four Lucky Clovers fixed. Four Borrower, four Bone Crusher, and four Beanstalk. This is like the core of the decks you can't change. I think you can go down to three Fae Bushes if you want to. I think you can go down to three Love Struck Beast. Um, but like some of these cards, you need like probably three copies of each of these cards at least. Um, the question is, what about the flex slots? So the options are basically, I think the things that I've seen most commonly played are like Growth Spiral, Escape the Wilds, uh, Nissa, and the Great Henge, and Hydrocrasis. I've seen some people on like Hydrocrasis and Innkeeper. Um, those are the major choices. So, um, I think Escape the Wilds is just incredibly powerful, and you need, I think, three copies of this card is, is about as low as I'd want to go. It's just, it's like a draw five plus bonus play a land in this deck so often, because so many of your spells are cheap to, like, get out of the, uh, exile zone. And then the fact that I want to Escape the Wilds sort of does play some role in morphing my deck a little bit. Like, um, escaping into another escape is often really awkward in the uh, kind of early to mid game because you kind of have to choose between playing the Escape the Wilds or playing the other cards you got off of it the next turn. And if you're playing Escape the Wilds two turns in a row, you're kind of letting the board maybe get out of control a little bit. Um, other expensive cards have the same problems. The Great Henge kind of has this problem. The Hydroid Crisis and Nissa certainly have this problem, where if you escape into them, you're sort of dictating a lot of how your next turn's going to go. And I just find that really awkward. I prefer to kind of like stick to just like doing more and more and more of what the deck does at its core, which is just find more Bone Crusher Giants, more Brazen Borrowers, more Fae of Wishes to go play with our sideboard, more Beanstalk Giants to get lands. I just, like, want to be doing more of whatever we're doing already. Because this deck's kind of core game plan is really strong. That's why I like doing the Escape the Wilds thing. I've gone back and forth between three and four copies, because, again, you don't want to reveal one off of another one. Gross Pyro is just kind of filler. It's just, like, the easiest way to say, yeah, sure, I'll have a 58-card deck instead. I'll get a little bit of free ramp sometimes, and then sometimes I'll draw it not to pay two mana draw a card, and that's not so bad. Um... It's totally possible that like one of these should be a Great Henge, or that I should be playing a fourth Escape the Wilds. Um, that's one of those things I'm tinkering with. Um, yeah. As for Nissa, I just found her to be kind of underwhelming. Um, she's a great card. Obviously, she can come down and win games by herself. She's amazing with Fae of Wishes. Um, and you do have like 14 forests, which is not a bad count for her. Um, the problem is that decks are just like ready to take her out a lot of the time. She dies to Murderous Rider, and having a five drop that dies to Murderous Rider isn't that fun. She dies to Casualties of War. Um, and also turns one of your lands into creatures that dies to casualties of war, which is really rough. Um, incarcerated Geneticist, I do have a Henge in the sideboard. Yeah, Henge in the sideboard is really good to, to be able to fetch. I think it's a good target. Um, but yeah, I just, I just found that Nyssa just didn't feel like she quite fit in that well. She's a very powerful card. It's possible I should go back to like testing two of her over some growth spiral or something. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, I'm just, I'm just currently not running her. Um, then Great Henge was like, it was fine as a one-of. It might have, might be better than Escape the Wilds. Um, there were just like a few too many games where it like was in my opening hand and just looked terrible because I just knew I wasn't going to be able to cast it until like turn seven unless I found a Lustruck Beast. Um, this deck does not have that many big creatures besides Beanstalk Giants. And if you can cast Beanstalk Giants safely, you're probably like, and they're surviving, you're probably winning the game anyway. Um, yeah, it's just a little bit awkward. Whereas Escape the Wilds, as long as you have five mana, um, is almost always just a great card to run out. This could be totally fine. This could be totally fine in the main deck. Um, on the sideboard, talking about this a little bit. Um, yeah, so uh, some of these cards are pretty fixed. I would always play them. So um, you have the package of pulling an expansion explosion. Uh, these cards are 
to sort them? No. Oh well. Playing an expansion explosion together are just like really essential. Um, possible that expansion is overkill. Uh, I have sometimes have been able to get by it a bit. It's like kind of using one fling to deal 13 damage on Beanstalk Giant or whatever, but um, in general, just being able to like, especially against like cat decks, they just tend to hover at 20 life forever. I mean, you've all probably had this experience. And just being able to like kill them out of nowhere once you've got enough mana is really valuable and can win you games that you just would not have won in any other way. <sighs> Additionally, um, expansion and explosion is not a bad card to fetch out. Like once in a while, you might actually want to just deal a bunch of damage and draw a bunch of cards. Um, that's rarely happened, but it is a possibility. Um, and then because I have no counter spells in the moment, in the cyber at the moment, expansion also can serve as a surrogate, like counter your counter spell if you need it to. That's pretty fringe. Most of the time you're just killing people with combo. Um, you always want to have at least one removal spell on the sideboard, like one cheap two-mana card that can deal with a big threat. Um, the question is, what threats do you want to deal with? Because there's no Assassin's Trophy in these colors. There's no uh, there's no Noxious Draft. You're not getting clean kills. Um, so right now I'm on Ken's Transformation, which has um, successfully neutralizes cards like Hydrid Crisis. As long as you have pump blockers, it can neutralize a Kenrith. It can neutralize a um, Torvald. It can neutralize a Gadwick's tap ability. Those are all really important things to do. Um, and it draws a card at the same time, which is great. Uh, other cards I've considered in this spot are Frogify. So, um, kind of a transformation, but it's a 1-1, one, one, but you don't draw a card. So sometimes you would really rather them have a 1-1 one, one than a 3-3. Three, three. Like if you're trying to find removal against an aggro deck, this is like a much better answer to something like a Questing Beast than a uh, kind of transformation would be, because sometimes you're just not gonna have time to play that card. On average, I found that like the card Cannon's transformation is felt worth having. Um, it's still like good enough at making threats less important, but Clarify might also be just totally fine. And then Lava Coil is the other option that, that I think is reasonable. Um, it just straight kills things instead of neutralizing them. But the downside is that it can't stop a Cavalier. It can't stop a Kenrith. <laughs> it uh, can't stop a uh, Corvold. And for that reason, I think it's probably weaker than those other options, just because the cards that kill you Kind of the decks that play cards like Corvold and uh, Kenrith. Kenrith and Corvold are the cards that kill you. You do need to deal with those. Um, so Return to Nature, just a pretty simple, you want at least one of these to, to, to kill artifacts and enchantments. Okay, that saying. Sorcerer Spyglass is here, mostly for cats. Um, I think I've rarely brought it against anything else because it's pretty bad against Nyssa. Still get a mana doubling effect even if she's not making three threes. But uh, can be used for that, can be used for Planeswalkers once in a while, but mostly it's just naming Cauldron Familiar or Witch's Oven. Um, it's gotten a bit worse in this slot. I almost think it might be good to have two of these. Um, or something like one of these and one card, just because the Thrashing Brontodons in like, the main deck, it survives a lot less than it used to. But that's also one of the reasons you have Once in Future, because you can just like loop it back to your hand pretty easily. Um, so speaking of which, Once in Future and Plane-Wide Celebration both do kind of similar things. Um, I guess you can look at Pulse and Marasa, Once in Future and Plane-Wide Celebration as like three cards all ripping on a theme. This is like getting permits back to your hand and also like being able to gain you life. So... I like having all of them as options. Pulse and Rasa for cheap life gain is just like super valuable in a lot of tight situations against aggressive decks. Yeah, Raider Craft, um, uh, Spyglass is also great for that. Yeah, and so in, in Cards Raider Geneticist, um, Fry is not one I've tested before. I think with Jeskai Fires almost vanishing from the meta, I feel like I haven't run into Jeskai Fires in like 20 matches now. I think Fry might have been good back then. I think right now it probably doesn't have enough targets. Um... So yeah, Pulse Morass is great against Aggro. Once in Future is just like a really nice card against a lot of like the blue counter style decks. The fact that it's an instant is amazing. You can just kind of fetch this or, and then just like wait and wait and wait and they always have to leave a counter or you're just going to like get back a ton of value at any point. Um, the fact that this can get back cards like Escape to the Wilds is also pretty handy or like Clovers that have been destroyed or Spyglasses that have been destroyed, all of which Pulse Morassa can't do. And then Playwide Celebration is just you're kind of like, I just need a huge breath of fresh air. Um lot of life where I need to like get a lot of cards back and just draw a bunch of cards. Um, Playmind Celebration actually feels like it's one of the first cards I would consider cutting from the sideboard now. Um, gaining 60 in life is not actually that different from gaining 6 life a lot of the time. You'll often find that you're using it for like get back 2 creatures and gain 8 life. Which is cool, but like Pulse and Rasa doing half of that for half the mana makes it way better because you'd rather just like cast those creatures. Thing. Um, it's possible that Playmind Celebration could be like another removal spell or another return to nature or something like that. Um, it's definitely the card that I find that I'm least happy to be fetching much of the time. Um, Great Henge, so I guess another card that sort of does a plain white celebration does, but often much better. It's kind of a huge, like, I win, I'm going to win the game unless you can take out my Love Struck Beast type card. Um, 
hold up an artifact removal, but the way this deck works is you're often playing a bunch of cheap adventure cards early. Like you're playing your the adventure size of your cards, and the creatures are just like kind of sitting around as you like fight your opponent's board with your spells. And then uh you use the Great Henge to draw cards off of all the stuff that's sitting in your sideboard. It's sort of like another innkeeper in that way, but turbocharged, and the fact that it gives you two mana really matters because this deck is very mana hungry. In fact, you could probably try playing 28 lands, and I would not like look askance at you if you're not willing to play 28 lands in the deck. <sighs> Alright, Mass Manipulation is a new addition to the sideboard, but I really liked it. Um, it was great against the random <laughs> four-color fires deck that we played earlier, but mostly it's here for ramp. Um, you often get to these situations where, like, you're making a big board and ramp is making a big board, and neither of you can really quite kill the other person, but they have a bunch of I-win buttons in their deck where you do not have as many I-win buttons. Um, sometimes leave them gain enough life with Hydro Cases that you can't kill them with, like, Fling plus Explosion, or Fling plus Expansion. Um, mass manipulation is just great. It's just like an eight mana, turn the game completely around, take their Nissa, take their Krasis, and especially in game one before they had Mystical Dispute, that's just like a really good thing to be able to do. Now that ramp is popular. Chandra is sort of your default win the game option against uh, blue counter type decks. She's really valuable. Would pretty much never cut her. She's just like she's good at targeting down things. She's good at sweeping boards. She's like really flexible and is sort of a uh, you know, I wish we had Garrick or something like this in these colors, but she's about the closest you're going to get. Um, you've got the extra Escape the Wilds, just a nice effect to have access to. Um, putting it in a sideboard means you're not going to hit it off your other Escape the Wilds, which is great, and being able to fetch it. Just like going, like, turn two Gross Spiral, turn three Fave Wishes, turn four Escape the Wilds against a slow deck is really nice. Sequences like that happen pretty frequently, and I think that covers the whole board. Minus a three Ether Gust, so um, I think having it a totally singleton sideboard can be good if you really have reasons for all those cards, but I find that it's usually a little excessive. And it is really nice to be able to bring in Aether Gust against Ramp and Jund Food, and just like having a couple of cheap interactive cards that can help you survive to get to the Fave Wishes late game. So I just like three Aether Gust. Um, this has been Mystical Dispute in the past, it has been Return to Nature in the past, but right now I think the by far the most flexible, cheap answer I have available is Aether Gust. All right, and I think that concludes the stream. Um, does anybody have? Questions or anything before I before I log off? Happy to hang around for another minute and, and keep chatting because I do love this deck and I love the fact that it, I've continued to get a seventy five percent win rate with it in Mythic. Oh, great! Um, yeah, stuff at EJ. So yeah, I mean, usually the only time I'll ever really do sideboarding is if I'm bringing in like a couple of Ether Gust for something, or once in a while against like Igro if I really feel like I'm not going to have time to use Fave Wishes for granted if I have to just play it as a one four. I'll bring in, like, I'll cut something like Escape to the Wilds that's very slow and bring in, like, Pulse and Morasso. Just to give, like, one more card in my deck that's fine. But you're right, usually you barely sideboard. And then Incarcerated Geneticist, um, Aether Gust against, uh, certainly not Blue Red Flash. They just don't have enough targets for it. Um, Blue Green Flash, I think I would bring in two copies. I'm not sure. I haven't played against that deck enough to be sure of what I would cut. I think my um, setup would probably look something like cut one. I think the most dangerous cards in the flash deck are Nissa, which you can't do that much about with your like general cards. You just kind of have to fight through with value. And then Nightback Ambusher. Because Nightback Ambusher is so good, I don't want to cut Borrower or Bone Crusher Giant. And Love Piece is great against Nissa. I think the most likely cards that I would bring in to Aether Dust for would be uh, probably like an Escape to the Wilds and a Growth Spiral or maybe a Beanstalk Giant. Or a Fae of Wishes. Actually, probably it would be like a Growth Spiral and a Fae of Wishes, and I would bring in two Aether Dust for those. Um, yeah, but I'm not sure yet. But I think it is good to have copies of that just because Nissa is so good against you and because Nightback Ambush is scary. <coughs> but yeah, deck is great. Um, something I should mention, by the way, is if any of y'all happen to be playing this nowadays and you do any kind of like recording of your you like stream or you uh, record videos of yourself playing, I love watching people play this deck. It is like my favorite thing to do in my off time. I will sometimes find myself like looking at other players like standard streams I'm just like clicking through the stream until I find them running into an opponent with Teamer Clover. I just think the deck's super fun. It makes me happy to see other people like trying their own takes on it and seeing which cards work well, but are not working well for them. So if you are playing any Teamer Clover anytime soon, um, and there's a way for me to view it after you've done, um, if it's like a stream VOD, let me know. Or if you plan to stream it soon, let me know and I'll follow your stream. I would love to see this deck being played for a while. Okay, so that concludes the stream for the night. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Uh, yeah, so Seva DJ. So I don't know if you followed me or not. Um, is that does the crown mean you're a follower? I am super. N I don't really know how Twitch works at all. Um, oh, your Twitch crown means yeah. If you follow me, you'll see when I'm live again. I, I don't know. I really enjoy this actually. This is a good chance I'll stream a bit later this week. Um, 
yeah, I've really been enjoying this deck. So I think I think there is a pretty good chance that I will stream again soon. Yes, so Sepa DJ, thanks. That means a lot. Um, I do not know if my streaming career, quote unquote, is going to go anywhere. Um, mostly, I like just hanging out with my teammates who do more streaming and supporting them. But as long as I'm building sweet decks and writing about them, I figure I might as well try to get a little bit more uh, face time and kind of show people what the deck's all about. So hopefully you'll be seeing more of me here. And I now realize I'm kind of like looking up at my other monitor. So let me look directly into the camera. I'll be back. And with that, that's a good night. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. And see ya.